when we look at data handling, we realize that there's a lot of calculations involved. We've had to calculate things like the mean, the median, the mode. We've had a look at range, we've looked at quartiles, we've looked at percentiles. There's been a lot of studying with uh, facts and, and, and figures and numbers and oh my goodness me. But now after getting all this information, what we've got to learn to do is we've got to be able to represent this data in some form of a picture. Okay? So that when I look at this picture, suddenly all that information is just kind of put down in one fell swoop. And the best pictures that we can look at are actually graphs. Because when we look at a graph, it's contained in one diagram and yet it contains all this information that we need. And that's what we're going to start looking at. We're going to start looking at how to represent data. Okay? And the first thing we're going to look at is line graphs. But before we even look at that, let's just read this. Over the next few sessions, we're going to be looking at how we can represent data by means of using graphs. Now, what is the purpose of a graph? The purpose of graphs is a way of exploring the relationship in data. It's a way of displaying and reporting the data. It makes it easier to report patterns and relationships, shapes of distributions and trends. Any graph used to report findings should show the significant features and findings of the investigation in a fair and easy to read way. The underlining structure of an investigation in terms of the relationships between and within the variables and the dependent variable on the horizontal axis and the independent variable on the vertical axis and we'll discuss all that shortly okay now types of graphs we have the following types of graphs we have a line graph a bar graph a histogram scatter plot pie chart and we have a box and whisker plot. Now, folk, we've covered most of this in our grade 11 syllabus. The one we wouldn't have had a look at is this box and whisker plot. So we need to give that some sort of focus and we'll do that in an episode coming up later on. But right now, let's go through these and just make sure we know what's required um, of us in an examination. So the first thing we're looking at is a line graph. Okay, so in data handling we use line graphs to show the relationship between two quantities. Okay, in other words, two different things. So we can work out quantity, for example, if we had temperature and we had uh, days of the week or maximum temperatures and months of the year or minimum temperatures and months of the year. So a line graph is formed by using straight lines to join data points which have been mapped on a grid. It is used to show the change of information over a period of time. Let's have a look at our very first example. The table below shows the average number of minutes per month that Job has spent watching TV from January to November last year. Let's have a look at it. So in January, he watched 108 hours of TV. In February, 103 hours. March, 108 hours. April, 120 hours. May, 115. Well, you can read the rest of it. Guys, that's a lot of TV. Let me explain to you how we know that. If we look at 108 hours that he watched in January, and we divide that by the number of days in a month. So let's say January has 31. Well, not, not let's say. It does have 31 days. So 31 days. And we land up then seeing that he's watched just under three and a half hours of TV on average a day. Boyke, you need to get a hobby, Jabu, and you need to do something else with your life here. Look at this horrendous figure here of 122 hours in June. 122 hours divided by their 30 days in June works out to just over four hours a day TV. How do you get anything done, Jabu, if you're watching that much TV? Especially if you're in matric. In matric, TV becomes something that 
is but a distant memory. Hey? Maybe a little bit over the weekend, but during the week you should be working kind of hard. Okay, let's not get sidetracked. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this and we're going to plot this on a graph or a set of axes. So plot this data on the set of axes. Now folks, first thing, when I get given a graph in matric, uh, my graph has got to have a heading. Okay, so let's make a lovely heading here and I'm going to write my heading as the number of hours um, watching TV. Cool. Now, we've got a vertical axis going up and down and I've got a horizontal axis running across. I'm going to make my vertical axis the number of uh, hours and my horizontal axis I'm going to say uh, the months. Now, do you remember? I've got months of uh, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Not putting December, why? Because we didn't have December as part of our data. Now, the number of hours when I look at this, I need to go from zero all the way through to 122 hours. Because let's have a look here. I, my lowest uh, or my highest is 102, uh, 122 hours and my lowest is 103 hours. So if I space out that set of axes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, you know what? I've got naught hours here. If I divide these blocks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. If I say 122 divided by 13 equals, and I'm going to land up, oh dear, 122 divided by 13 blocks, and I get 9,38. Means every block represents um, 9, um, hours okay but what i'm going to do is i'm going to cheat a little bit and i'm going to say you know we're going to do one of these lines what's that mean means i'm cutting my graph and i'm allowed to do that because the lowest i needed was 103 so what i'm going to say is this i'm going to call this 102 104 106 108 110 112, 114, 116, 118, 120 hours. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can see a bigger distinction between the number of hours. Okay, now normally in a metric paper they will give you the set of axes. Okay, I've put this in here just to make us think a little bit on how we can draw our axes. Okay, so having a look at that, in January month we were told we wa uh, Jabu watched 108 hours of TV. So let's have a look. We've got 102, 104, 106, 108 hours. I'm going to make a little dot there. February, we said it was 103, so it's 102, 104, so 103 is in the middle. Uh, March, we went back up to 108. April was 120. Okay, so 110, 120, all the way up there. May, we came down to 115. That's 110, 112, 114, 115. July, 122, 120, 122. June, 116. So we got 110, 112, 14, 116. August was 105, 102, 104, 105. September, 110. October was back down to 105. Let's just get it. Yeah, 105, and November was 104. 
Now, we've got to join these dots because that's what this is all about. We've got to draw a line. The question says draw a line graph and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to use my ruler. Guys, don't use freehand for this graph, okay? Because if I've got to read some readings off, it's not going to be accurate. And you know what? The markers don't like looking at work that looks all shabby, okay? You want to impress your markers. You want to get them on your side. You've got a ruler. If you don't have one, get one. You can get one for about 90 cents, okay? Nice little cheap one. Okay, so let's draw straight lines. Now, I don't have to draw, uh, get a ruler because this lovely board allows me to draw straight lines, and that's what I'm going to do. So from there to there is one. Then I go, oopsie, then I'm going to draw another line. Let's just get this line quickly. Then I'm going to draw a line here. And then I'm going to draw another line all the way here. We just got to keep getting this line for us. Cool. Then I'm going to draw another line. And another line, and another line, and guys, they, they give nice marks to do this, hey? so it will take you a bit of time, but it's well worth taking your time and doing it nice and neatly, okay? I'm not going to draw all the question, all the graphs I have, um, but I just want to do this one so we can see exactly what's happening. Right, there is my graph. Okay, draw my straight line graph. Let's see the type of questions they could ask me in a metric exam on this. So let's just go down. And first question, can you observe any trends or patterns in the data? Give some possible reasons for these trends. Okay, so let's have a look. So if you look carefully, we can see that there is a bit of a trend here where uh, April we go a little bit high, July we're going a bit high, uh, and then it starts to drop down here. October, November, we've gone right down. Okay, So I would presume it's gone a little bit high here because in April we're on holiday. And when we're on holiday over that Easter holiday period, what happens is we get more time to watch TV. July is another holiday season, allowing us more time to watch holidays. November, I notice a bit of a drop. Why is there a bit of a drop? Well, I presume there's a bit of a drop because there's exams, and Job is probably taking his exams a little bit seriously. And so instead of wanting to watch four hours of TV, he's dropped it down to three. Jabu, that's not good enough. Okay, three hours of TV when there's a, 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 three hours of TV a day when there's exams. Boiki, you need to sort yourself out here. Hey? And uh, here in September, it's gone up a little bit, probably because of the September school holidays. All right. Again, January is quite high, September holidays. It drops in February. Why? Because everyone's fresh in February. Hey? It's like school's just started. You've got like, these wonderful goals that you've set yourself. And then it kind of diminishes, all right? Then you get to a holiday, it comes down a bit, another holiday. You're starting to get ready for exams. You've got a bit of a fright because you did so badly in those other exams. And so we start studying September school holiday. We're watching a bit more TV. Can you see how drawing this graph just kind of takes all the information and makes it so much easier to understand. If I looked at this table, when I look at this table, it's very difficult to see trends or see what's actually happening with this data just by looking at all these numbers. But as soon as I put it and I put it in a graph, voila, I can see exactly what's going on. Okay, what other questions? Yeah, would you be able to represent this data on a bar graph? Yes, you would, and we'll talk about that later. And what is the advantage of using a line graph to show this information? Okay, and I've already expressed that drawing a line graph helps us see the different trends that are going on. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Here's a question where they give us a graph and they ask us information from 
from that graph. And guys, examiners can do that, hey? And there has been a trend where examiners have asked us to draw graphs, but then they've also given us graphs and asked us questions on the graphs. So I'm just going to answer two little questions here just to show you how we read information from this. So the customer was surprised by how many dollars she had to pay. So she found the following graph for 2015-16 on the certain website. So somebody wants to exchange uh, dollars for rand. So here we go. First question, there's all this weird graph and you can see how it's changing. Why? Because the Rand dollar exchange changes on a daily basis and you can see all this weird and wonderful changes. With this graph, what I want you to look at, let's say we look at uh, between February and March, I'm just saying, okay? So between February and March, there's not one reading. There are a whole lot of different readings going on. Why? Because like I said, the exchange rate changes on a daily basis. All right, so here's my graph. Wow, it looks all compli complicated. I'm telling you now, don't panic. Let's have a look at the type of questions that were asked on this. What was the exchange rate on the 1st of December 2015? Okay, so let's find the 1st of December. Here it's actually marked for you. It's actually given to you. Now, if I get my ruler and I draw a line, don't even draw a line, but if I just put my ruler down and... Um, go across, and I'm going to do that here, you can see where this line is actually uh, meeting. So it's meaning here's my 14 rand a dollar, here's my 15 rand a dollar. Halfway between would be round about over there, so I would say it's pretty just below the halfway mark. So if that's 14 and that halfway mark is 14 Rand 50, I would say we're looking at round about 14 Rand 45. Now guys, if you get a question like that in your exam, please understand that your markers are going to give you a bit of a leeway. Some people might look at that and say, you know what, it's just below halfway, I'm going to make it 14 uh, uh, Rand 40, 40. Some might say 14.45. By giving those answers that are close enough, the examiner's going to say, you know what, hey, this person knows what they're doing. The truth is, and it's just because I know it, the actual answer was 14.43. So 14.45 is a phenomenal estimation looking at my graph. Okay, see how easy it was to read off? So it looks like, oh my word, what am I going to do? But it's not that hard at all. Let's go back and look at another question they gave you. In what month? Would the American customer have paid the least amount of dollars for uh, the invoice? So if we look here, and this comes from another question, I've just selected a few questions. Okay, so the least amount of dollars for something. So when would I get the least amount of dollars for my rands? When my rands are at its highest point, I'm going to get my least amount of dollars. Okay, right. That's how we read off our line graphs. So in summary, because we need to take an air break here, in this segment we've covered the following. We've introduced the reasons for drawing graphs to represent data. We've introduced various types of graphs. And we've, had a, uh, we've worked with an example illustrating the use of line graphs by first of all drawing a graph and then by looking at a graph that's already drawn and extracting information from it. Those are the two ways your examiner can ask you questions at the end of the year. Draw this graph, or here's a graph, I'm going to ask you questions about that. We'll chat again straight after the ad break.